For me? Out by Garibaldi. Let's continue. Quadratic trig equations, part 2, page 319. Let's look at example 3. Then we're going to do example 4, and then although then technically lesson is done, I'm going to show you a couple of weird curveball-y type questions as well. And then I'll give you the rest of the class to plow through some of this here stuff. So it says, answer to the nearest degree. Oh, that's swearing. Brett, you know what? We're not going to pick up the phone. So we're going to cross out where it says, answer to the nearest degree. And I'm going to scribble out the degrees. And instead of a 360 degrees, you know what I'm going to put here, Brett? I'm going to put here a 2 pi. What kind of an equation is this? It's quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. So what am I going to do? I'm going to factor it. And again, I'm going to kind of visualize, I'll write this down here and I'll erase it later, that instead of cosecant squared minus 3 cos minus 28, I'm seeing something squared minus 3 something minus 28 equals 0. That's the equation I'm kind of imagining. By the way, those of you that wrote that down, you're going to run out of room unless you wrote it down here somewhere. How's it factor? GCF? No. How many terms? Two? Because that's different. It's no. Three terms. Uh, is there something in front of the squared sandali? Or is, oh, this is going to be one of the nicer ones to factor. So it's going to factor into two brackets. Nice. And I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to negative 3. Yeah. So it's going to be cosecant of x minus 7, cosecant of x minus 4. And now I can get rid of this. That's what I said, plus 4. Okay, you read here, let me make that a little a bigger so you can see it easier. Thank you. Spencer, what are my roots? Do I have a triangle with a 7 or a 4 in it? This is not special triangles. So how do I solve cosecant? I'm going to solve these both independently. How do I solve cosecant? Uh, I don't. Oh, I know what I did. Remember what I did, Tyler? No, 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 not yet. Eventually, yes. But do you have a cosecant button on your calculator? You do have a cosecant button on your calculator? Where? Oh, pray tell. For me? That's not a cosecant button. That's a cosine and a sine and a tangent button. You're telling me there's a cosecant button on your calculator? Say no! Thank you. So what do I do with cosecant? Yeah, Ryan. You know what, Ryan? Give him a little slap upside the head. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wake him up. What do I do here? I got to flip both sides. Now, when it was a special triangle, we could get away without flipping both sides. We actually flipped the hypotenuse adjacent opposite little shtick. But here, because I don't have a special triangle, I'm going to rewrite this as, Tyler, what does cosecant go with? This is going to be sine x equals 1 over 7. Flip, flip. And sine x equals negative 1 over 4. Flip, flip. Flip both sides. Don't just flip one side. you got to flip both sides. Take the reciprocal of both sides. Which trig function am I dealing with here, really, Vlad? Positive or negative? Here or here? Ooh, I didn't write the cast out. I visualized it. Okay, fine. C, A, S, T. How am I going to find the reference angle? I don't have a special triangle. This time, now I agree with you, Tyler. I'm going to use shift second function. The reference angle is going to be the inverse sine 
of one seventh. What's my reference angle? Eight point two one? Uh can't be eight point two one. Point eight two one? Are you in degrees? Bet you you are. I think we're in radians here. Because eight, by the way, the reason I knew it, eight radians twice around is six point two eight radians. Eight would be like three and a half times. No, no, it's gonna it's gotta give us a nice small little angle here. Sorry? Point one four three? Anybody else? Yes? Point one four three. Okay, so now I can give you x1 and x2. x1 is going to be point one four three. That's this guy. How can I find that guy on my calculator? Yeah. Could you do that, please? And you'll notice I'm showing a little bit less work as time progresses. Probably on a test I'd show all this. 2.99 what? Oh, so is, is it 3.00? Is that right? Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, let's find the root for this side. Isabel, which trig function are we dealing with here? Yeah, positive or negative on this side? With authority, like you know what you're... Negative, because it's a negative one quarter, right? Uh, which means, Isabel, we must be here and here. We're going to find the reference angle again. Now that's going to be the inverse or the inverse or shift sign, uh, but I'm not going to put the negative in here, Isabel. I used the negative already. I always find the reference angle of the positive angle. What'd you get, Asar? 0.252, round it off properly. 0.253 or point, which one? 253, yeah. Now, how big is that angle? Is that right, 0.253 or not? Yeah. So how big is that angle there? And I'll call that x3. I think pi plus, which is 3.39. And then the second angle is that one there. How can I figure out that one there? I think 2 pi minus, which is what, Ellen? 6.03? Now, remember, at the very top of this question, they also wanted the general solution. And I said, I don't know if we have room. If they wanted the general solution, first of all, we go back to the original equation. We check, is there anything in front of the x's at all? Nope. So what's the period here? Uh, cosecant. What's the period of cosecant? Yeah, if they want the general solution, you would say plus multiples of 2 pi. So 2 pi n, where n is an integer, plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Weird one, number number one. This one. And again, I'm going to argue what kind of a quad, uh, what kind of a quadratic, what kind of an equation is it's a quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. Um, GCF? No. How many terms, Eric? Three. Eric, is there something in front of the squared? Yuck. This is going to be factoring by grouping. I'm going to visualize that this is actually... 2a squared plus 5a minus 3. That's what I'm kind of imagining. How did we factor these? We said we're looking for two numbers that multiply to what and add to what? Caitlin. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to positive 5? 
Kara. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. 2 cos squared theta. I'm going to decompose, which is why this is called the decomposition method, this 5 cos into positive 6 cos minus 1 cos, and then drop the minus 3 equals 0. Then in my mind, I group this into two terms and two terms. And I factor out a greatest common factor. Let me get rid of that line, though. So I'll just see if I can do this visualizing. GCF from the first two, hey, yeah, that's going to be 2 cos theta, cos theta plus 3. GCF from the second two, is there one? Not really. So we have to fall back on the obvious ones. One or negative one. And I think this time I want to factor out a negative one. Because that will give me an identical bracket. So what does this actually factor into? 2 cos theta minus 1. Cos theta plus 3 equals 0. By the way, I like this question. And you'll see why in a second. Carly, what are my roots? Cos theta equals a half. Cos theta equals negative 3. I want to talk about this right hand, this root here. Does anybody see anything weird about this? Let's visualize this just temporarily as a graph. This is saying, when does cos theta touch negative 3 high? Just watch. There's cos. How high, Dominique? And here's negative 3. Will these two graphs ever touch? Will there ever be a solution for this side here? This will happen fairly often where you're going to get one of your factors, Brett, and specifically for sine and for cosine, since the biggest sine gets is 1, and same with cosine, and the smallest it gets is negative 1, and same with cosine. If you get a factor, a root, that's bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1, and you're dealing with sine and cosine, no solution. What about for tangent, ugly cousin? What was the range of tangent, all reals? Tangent, you'll always be able to find a solution unless you're at an asymptote. Okay. I kind of like this because, Trevor, this also lets me save you time on a test. I can give you a quadratic trig, test that you know how to factor it, test that you know how to deal with it, but give you one root with no solution. It's less time. You're only going to have to find two of the answers, not four of the answers. So probably one of your questions on the test will have that. It's a nice little time saver, too. Let's go to this side over here, then. Do I have a triangle with a 1 and a 2 in it? Oh, hey, let's solve this as an exact value, then. I'll still start out the same. I'll go C, A, S, T. Cosine is positive here and here. The triangle we're dealing with is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Which angle has a cosine of 1 half? Why, the top one up here, pi by 3, which means this angle is pi by 3, and that angle is pi by 3. I think my first root is pi by 3. My second root is... Uh, 
Oh, it would be 6 pi by 3, take away 1 pi by 3, 5 pi by 3, yes? So, which one will have no solution if you're bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1? Sine or cos. Which one still will? Tangent and cotangent. Oh, and secant and cosecant will, because when you reciprocalize them, you're okay still. Every year, I also put a question like this where there's a tangent there, and kids cross out the tangent. Don't. Yeah. Oh, did they restrict the domain up? <gasps> Ellen, you get a candy. Look, 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 look. They restricted the domain, didn't they? You know what? I should have highlighted or underlined that or something, make a note of that. I didn't notice that they'd restricted the domain. You're right. Now I would also have to go out of domain. I didn't read the question carefully. Terrible, Mr. Duick. Terrible. Now, having said that, did I test domain restrictions on the last trig test? Say yes. Yeah, I'll probably give you a nice zero between two pi on all your all your domains this test. Okay. I was going to do a few more, but I think you guys are doing okay on this, and I'll just give you the rest of the class to whittle away at this and try this, and then a bit later on I'll have a take-home quiz for you as well on quadratic trig equations. So, I already assigned 1, 2b and c, 3b and c, 4 all, Five all six B is B this would be an A plus level question. I would feel comfortable giving this as a nasty multiple choice, not as a written you'll notice it's got some signs and some coses in it. Your hint is try factoring by grouping. Um yeah. Nah. Eight. Nine. <gasps> A log trig equation. Again, I would consider this an A plus level question. Ten. Very short lesson. I usually do this over one day. I'm trying to spread it over two days to give you more practice. And in about half an hour, I'll have a take-home quiz. It's just not photocopied yet because the photocopier was going wonky on Friday.